Hi, today we're going to take a quick look at MicroTCA.4 and what these platforms provide that go beyond standard MicroTCA solutions. I'm going to assume that you already know something about MicroTCA, so we won't be going into that architecture in detail. We're going to look at several examples of MicroTCA.4 hardware, all of which come from Varditech. We're far from the only provider of such hardware, there's a very strong ecosystem but we do have the advantage of developing, manufacturing and supplying all of the elements needed. We also supply anything from boards up to integrated, application-ready platforms. Now you will know that MicroTCA is a very scalable modular architecture with strong platform management capabilities. There are a range of switch fabrics supported and many of the platform features are optional, allowing you to select the right price performance point for your application. Also, it was derived from a telecom standard, so it's designed with high reliability at its heart. This makes it ideal for large distributed systems, which is why it was adopted by the physics community for control and monitoring of installations such as particle accelerators. That community worked with industry to define some extensions to the standard, which we'll look at now. And one of the key features of MicroTCA.4 is the provision of rear transition modules, or RTMs. The RTM is the same size as a double width AMC and the idea is that off-the-shelf AMCs from industry be coupled with custom RTMs developed by the research community. This pairing depends, of course, on clearly defining the interface between the two. A lot of work has gone on in this area with pinout recommendations now available for different card types. While the technical model of splitting functionality between AMC and RTM remains valid, the business model is moving over time, with off-the-shelf RTMs becoming available for common functions. If we look at an example chassis, you can see this is deeper than normal to account for the RTMs. This unit, the VT813, is a high-powered chassis which can be configured with up to four 1100 watt AC power modules. Cooling is important in such chassis platforms, and it's worth noting that MicroTCA.4 defines two cooling regions. High power functionality should reside on the AMCs, while RTMs are used for relatively low power functions such as signal conditioning, since the airflow is less at the rear. If we look at the architecture, the top half of this diagram will be familiar since it's standard MicroTCA. The same modularity and fabric choices exist, with redundancy of all the active elements. Now though, each AMC has an RTM associated with it. There are extensions to the platform management to allow for those RTMs, so they're managed in a similar way to the AMCs. You will notice, however, that they have no direct connection to the backplane, so each of them is managed through their respective AMC. MicroTCA.4 also defines enhancements for precision timing, and there's provision for a mezzanine interconnect between the RTMs. We can look at a typical AMC, which in this case is the AMC520, a high-speed A to D and D to A converter. You can see how clocks, management, fabrics, etc. are routed to the AMC connector as normal. On this board, the analog I.O. is routed to the RTM connector, so the RTM can be used for signal conditioning, filtering or waveform shaping, for instance. If we look at the board itself, we can see that the double width AMC allows space for physical separation of the analog subsystem from the FPGA, with input signal traces being kept as short as possible. Another example would be a processor AMC, so we'll look at the AMC 725. This is a Xeon based host with onboard SSD RAID. In this case the RTM area is used for I.O. expansion via PCIe with the option for further storage. This is consistent with what we said earlier about putting the higher thermal load, the processor, on the AMC while making use of the RTM space for additional functionality. You can see from both the block diagram and the front panel that the extra space of a double width AMC has also been used to bring both dual gigabit ethernet and dual 10 gig e to the front. So a single card can be used as a host with DVI graphics and USB and for data aggregation. 
Now so far we've talked about some of the benefits of extra space on double width AMCs and on the RTMs and we've talked about micro TCA.4. But it's worth noting that these systems don't have to be big or exclusively micro TCA.4. This chassis is an example of a platform that's ideal for compact systems and mixes both micro TCA.4 and standard micro TCA.0. This is the VT812 and it provides four micro TCA.4 slots and four micro TCA.0 slots. Over this side you have the dot four slots, each with room for an RTM behind it. There's room for two MCHs and up to four standard AMCs, which can be single or double width. And this is a two U shelf, so it's a very compact arrangement. The power modules fit in the rear, and with telco alarms and a JTAG switch module, it's a fully featured chassis. So micro TCA doesn't have to be big and can be used quite comfortably with standard AMCs. This is an interesting extension to the micro TCA family. While originally defined for experimental physics, the standard is useful across a range of applications and brings some real benefits to test and measurement, video broadcast and other industries. It's worth considering in any area that is IO intensive or where it's helpful to separate the signal conditioning on the RTMs from processing on the AMCs. If you'd like to know more, visit the website or drop us an email. Many thanks for your time.